Active Directory Audit Policies. Auditing provides us with the ability to track changes made or attempts to access certain objects with Active Directory. In Windows Server 2003, there was only one directory service policy that you could enable, and that was to enable directory service access. Now in Windows 2008, we have three more policies in addition to auditing directory service access, and they are directory service changes, directory service replication, and detailed directory service replication. So let's take a look at how we configure auditing. So we'll go and click on Start, and we'll go to Administrative Tools, and then we'll launch the Group Policy Management Console. And in the left here, we'll expand our forest, we'll expand domains, and then our domain, windstructorlab.com. And we'll right-click on our default domain policy, and we'll choose Edit. And this will open up the Group Policy Management Editor. So under the Computer Configuration heading, we'll expand Policies, We'll expand Windows Settings, Security Settings, Local Policies, and we'll select Audit Policy. Now on the right hand side, if you're at all familiar with Windows 2003 auditing, you'll probably recognize that this all looks the same as we saw in Windows Server 2003, and it is. The policy for auditing directory service access is still here, and there doesn't appear to be anything new. Well, that's true, the new policies that we have with Windows Server 2008 aren't to be found here, but we'll get to that in a moment. So let's just briefly talk about the policies that we have here first. Now at the top, our first policy is to audit account logon events, and this will allow you to log when a user attempts to log on to the domain or log off from the domain. Now if we right click on this policy and choose properties, and then choose to define these policy settings, we can choose to log successful and failed attempts to log on. So obviously if a person authenticated and was able to log on to our domain, then this would be a successful event. If their password was rejected, for example, and they were denied the ability to log on, then this would be a failure. Now, just remember though, whilst we work through these different policies, that whilst it might seem tempting to turn everything on and then log a record of everything, this is going to generate a lot of events and it will fill your logs up really quickly. So unless you're running a highly secure environment and really need to do that, well, you might want to be more selective about what it is that you turn on. So for example, you may wish to log these successful attempts to log on, but if a failed logon was prevented from logging onto your network, do you really care to know about it? After all, they were denied access anyway. Well, you might, since it would help you to identify attempts to break in or attempts to access things a user shouldn't be accessing. But again, it's totally up to you what you decide to log. Just keep in the back of your mind that you will get a lot of events and turning everything on will require you to implement some good management practices of your event logs. Now also, if you want to find out more about each of these policies or you've forgotten what they do, if you click on the Explain tab, you're going to see a brief explanation about each, so you can refer to that if you need to. Well, the next policy we have here is to audit account management, and this is used to audit user accounts and groups. And this policy will log things like creating users and creating groups, or modifying or deleting them. It'll also log disabling and enabling user accounts, as well as password changes. Now again, as with all of these policies, if we right click on it and choose properties and then check this box, we can then log successful and failed attempts to make these changes. Now next we can audit directory service access and this allows us to audit users that are accessing active directory objects that have their own system access control list, which is another way of saying that the object has permissions. Log on events will allow you to log when a user attempts to log on or log off from a computer. Now if we enable both this policy and the one up here at the top, then an event will be generated on the domain controller. Next is object access, and this is a popular one that allows us to audit access to objects such as files and folders and registry keys and printers and so forth. And this is one that you probably will want to enable. But just be aware that since you probably have hundreds of thousands of files and folders and registry keys, this is a policy that can really fill up your logs so make sure that when you do enable it, that this is something that you're really meant to do. The next policy here, audit policy change, 
allows us to audit changes to user rights policies, audit policies and trust policies. Privilege use covers things like backups and restores, debugging programs, bypassing traverse checking, generating security audits and so forth. Now process tracking allows us to audit program activations, processes that exit, handles and indirect object access. And finally we have system events where we can audit when users restart or shut down the computer or when an event occurs that affects either the system security or the security log. Okay, well let's now take a look at the new policies that we have in Windows 2008 and to do that we'll need to go to a command prompt. So we'll go and click on start and we'll fire up a command prompt and we'll type in audit poll with the slash set switch and then we'll add in the subcategory switch followed by the name of the policy that we want to enable or disable so I'm going to use the directory service changes policy and then we'll choose whether we want to audit this for successes or failures so let's choose success and the final thing we'll need to do is decide whether we want to enable or disable this policy. Well, it isn't enabled at the moment, so let's enable it. So we'll add in the enable switch and we'll hit enter. And of course, it's always a good idea to check your spelling. And I will note that I missed out a colon right there. So we'll hit enter. And there I go again. I could spell success right and that would make it a success. And there we go. I wanted to buy a spell checker in the command prompt. Okay, so now that I've finally learned how to spell and enabled this policy, to see it in action, let's go and click on Start. We'll go to Administrative Tools, and then we'll launch Active Directory Users and Computers. And let's right-click here, and we'll choose to create a new user account. And let's just give this account a name. We'll just call it Test here, and we'll make the UPN the same. We'll click Next. And then we'll just enter in a password, and I'll type it in again to confirm it. And I'll leave these other defaults as they are. They're not important right here. We'll click Next, and then Finish. All right, now that we've made a change in Active Directory, we'll go and click on Start, Administrative Tools, and we'll launch the Event Viewer. And this will help us see if we've been able to successfully audit the change that we just made. So on the left-hand side, we'll expand Windows Logs, and we'll be selecting the Security Log, and in the middle of this window here, we can see a bunch of user account management entries. So let's just double click on the first one here. And we can see from the text here, it's telling us that a user account was enabled. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see that that account was the test account that we just created. So let's close this. We'll go back to Active Directory Users and Computers. And I'm going to right click on this same account we just created. We'll choose to delete it. And now if we go and switch back to our event viewer and we'll hit F5 just to refresh our screen. And we should now see an event here telling us that the account was deleted. And we'll be looking for this event here with an ID of 4726. So if we double click on that one, we can see a user account was deleted. And of course, we can also see who did that change, which was myself as the administrator. And if we scroll down, there's the test account. So this is good because now we have an audit trail that we can go back to find out who the culprit was that deleted the account, which was me. We have a record of what account was deleted, on which server it was deleted, and of course we have the date and time. So now we have a history of changes that have been made. Now do bear in mind, however, that just because we enabled auditing on directory service changes, don't think that this is going to audit every possible scenario with changes that are made to Active Directory. So let's just close this and we'll go back to Active Directory Users and Computers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my domain here and let's choose to create a new OU. So I'm going to call this OU Test and we'll click on OK. All right, that's been created. So now let's go to the View menu here. We'll turn on Advanced Features. And I'm going to right-click on my Test OU and choose Properties. Then we'll go to the Security tab. We'll choose Advanced. Then the Auditing tab. And we can see that we are auditing for successes for everyone. So let's click on Edit. 
and here we'll be able to see what we're actually auditing. Now we can see here that we are auditing writing group policy links, but if we scroll down, that's the only thing that we're actually auditing. So if we cancel this and we'll go back to our event viewer and we'll hit F5 to refresh it, you might note that nothing's been written to the log that tells us that I've just created this new OU. So let's minimize our event viewer and we'll go back here to our properties of our test OU and we'll click on the add button and let's just add in the everyone group again and we'll click OK. And we'll scroll somewhere down near the bottom and I'm going to check these boxes here to create organizational unit objects and delete them. We'll, we'll order for both successes and failures there and we'll click on OK and then we'll click OK again. So we'll go inside our test OU here, and I'm going to create a new OU, and we'll call this one test2. And I'm also going to right-click on my domain here, and I'm going to create a new OU there, and we'll call this one test3. All right, now let's go back to our event viewer, and we'll refresh it. And you can see at the top here that we do have an event telling us that a directory service object was created. So let's double click on that one and we'll scroll down and we can see that was our OU, our test2 OU. And that of course is the child OU of the test OU that we just modified the policy on. Now the fact that we also created the test3 OU, that's not to be found here at all. In fact, you do notice that we do have another one here for directory service, but this is just referring to an operation being performed on our test object. So test3 hasn't been logged at all. So it's worth pointing this out because you should bear in mind that enabling auditing doesn't cover everything. You still do need to give a great deal of thought to what it is that you really want to audit. And a lot of things you will need to enable manually for groups of users or specific users that you want to target. And you'll especially want to give consideration to object access when you enable that policy in the group policy management editor, since you probably won't need to audit everyone accessing everything, as that'll only slow everything down considerably. So give it some thought and only audit access to files and folders as required. And the process is the same you'll find that when you want to audit a particular user or group, you're going to do it in the same way. All right, well, let's close this, and we'll go and click on Start, and we'll open up Computer. We'll go to our C drive, and if we right-click on any of these folders here, let's just choose the Users folder, and then we'll choose Properties, then the Security tab, and then the Advanced button, and finally the Auditing tab. Now we can click Edit, and then the Add button. And for the purposes of this example, let's just use the Everyone group again. So we'll click Check Names and then OK. Now here, we can choose what we want to audit when people access this folder. So we can log when users read files, create files, folders, delete files and folders, change permissions and so forth. So again, you'll find there's practically nothing of use that you can't audit, but auditing too many things isn't really practical. So this isn't really one of those things you want to just turn on for everything. You do really need to give it some thought beforehand if you want auditing to be a useful addition to your overall security and management plan and not something that causes more problems than it solves. Now, by the way, this that we've just talked about was just one of the new three policies that we've enabled. If we cancel all this, we can change the words here in the quotes from directory service changes to directory service replication or detailed directory service replication and then leave the rest of the command as you see it and that'll enable the other two audit policies. Of course, if you want to turn them off, then just change this word enable to disable and then hit enter and that'll turn off auditing so you won't be auditing these things anymore. Now, if you're at all unsure about what policies are in effect, you can use the audit poll command to find out. So if we type in audit poll followed by the slash get switch and then we're going to add in the category switch and add in an asterisk and hit enter. In the output here, you can see all of the potential audit policies and the really cool thing here is that you can turn on or off individual subcategories of each policy, something that we couldn't do at this level before. So 
Let's see how we can affect individual policies, and we'll do that again using the audit poll command. So let's go back to our previous command here, and we'll change directory service changes to something else. So let's just scroll through this list here, and we'll take a look. And at the bottom here, we'll use this one, other account logon events, because we can see that's currently not turned on. So in our command, we'll go and delete directory service changes. And we're going to set that one to, and in fact, I'm just going to copy and paste this in, because I'm too lazy to type it in. With paste. So we've got other account logon events. So we'll hit enter, and we can see that command was successful. So let's rerun our category command again. And now here, you can see that other account logon events is now being enabled for successes. This is great, since now if we're experiencing a problem, such as if we're having replication problems, well, rather than turning on auditing for the entire directory service access category, we can now just turn on the specific policy that we need. And talking of policies, if you want to find out all of the events that can possibly be generated from our policies, we can do that as well, and we'll need to use the Windows Event Utility. So, we'll type in Windows Event Util, and then we'll add in GP, which stands for Get Publisher. And the publisher is going to be Microsoft Windows Security Auditing. And then we're going to add in the slash GE switch, which will display the metadata information, and then the slash GM switch, which simply means Get Message, and this will display the actual event message instead of just the numeric event ID, and we're going to set that to true. Now, before we hit enter here, you might want to output this all to a text file, or at least increase the buffer in your command prompt, since this is going to output a lot of information, and it's definitely going to scroll off the top of your command window. So let's just output this to a file. Let's just call it audit.txt on the C drive there. So we'll hit enter. And that command has completed, so we'll go here to our C drive, and there's the file. It's 160K, so we'll open that up, and we'll just expand this. And if we just scroll down here, you can see that there's a lot of events in this file, and these are various events that could potentially be generated from our use of audit policies. So you can use this knowledge to create event viewer filters, or forward events to other servers for collection, or use event searches to search for these type of events using other management tools such as Microsoft Operations Manager. So in this video, we've talked about auditing access to objects and events in your domain. With the statistics overwhelmingly telling us that the majority of corporate intrusions and damage is caused from the inside by company employees, it's nice to know that there are inbuilt tools with Windows 2008 that you can use to provide a trail of where people have been and what they've been doing. Whilst auditing won't protect your systems, you'll need to rely on other things like permissions and firewalls and other security mechanisms for that. It does give you proof of what people are doing, which will support your case for taking things further if that situation arises. Now, if you want to find out more about these policies, you can visit Microsoft's TechNet site and search for audit policies, which I found at this address here. But do bear in mind that this address may have changed by the time you watch this video, so you can search for it if you need to. We hope you've enjoyed this video and would like to thank you for supporting Winstructor.